Good morning, my YouTube peeps. Um, I am back home from my visit to Abigail. So Grant um, is off taking care of his dad. And I'm going to leave here and go take care of my mom uh, a few hours from now. I just wanted to spend some time here at home. And um, today's topic is a rumination, a meditation on the difference between art and craft. There's that's kind of debatable, but um, it's something I've been thinking about lately in relation to the hats I've been making. Um, but before I do that, I want to show you something. Grant and I, on our way home, we stopped at the at uh, Ben Franklin Craft uh, there in Grass Valley and picked up some wonderful yarn. Um, and right next door was a grocery outlet. Um, and Grant picked up this. It is a yogurt with live culture made from coconut milk instead of uh, cow's milk. It's not entirely organic, at least it doesn't label itself that way. However, it, they did use organic coconut, organic cane sugar, and some other stuff in here. Um, this is a result of a new hobby that my husband and my kid and I have, and that is going to close out places like grocery outlet, 99 cent store and so forth, and looking for organic alternatives to stuff we eat all the time. Um, we found a lot of really interesting stuff. Um, this, you know, semi-organic, but we found, like I've said in my other videos, we found um, oh, salsa, beans, um, He's found wonderful vitamins, um, teas, uh, all sorts of stuff that is uh, that's that's uh, labeled organic. So it's just sort of a it's like a scavenger hunt. We're out looking for organic. So we're going to all of us want to replace all three of us want to replace as as much of the um, in or I mean not inorganic it's organic but the processed chemical filled foods that we eat with better alternative. So, I thought I would taste test this. It's called So Delicious Dairy-Free Coconut Milk Yogurt Alternative, and it's also soy-free. And there are, how many calories? 180, I think. There's 130 calories in this. So, without further ado, we're going to rip off the lid. Um, this one is um, has raspberry in it in addition that's its flavor so I'm gonna pull the top off okay looks like yogurt to me so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and give it a try um, I need to get a fire going it's overcast on and off rainy today not cold cold but cold ish and um, I'm not going to complain about cold because I know so more, so many of you guys on the East Coast, you really know what cold is today. I guess this is the beginning of your big snowstorm. So here's wishing, um, well, here's praying for your safety and um, and wishing that you stay warm and that you have enough food and water and you can just dig in and get through this. Um, your thoughts, I mean, my thoughts have been with you guys. Last night I woke up in the middle of the night and checked the, um, you know, people, different people have snow cams going and that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm thinking about you. Okay, so here we go. Oh my. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I could eat one of these every day. All right, first let's talk about the smell. Well. All right, there's very little aroma, uh, fragrance, or scent coming off of this. But what I do smell <laughs> is um, a very clean, light, coconut fragrance. It smells a little bit like honey, too, even though there's no honey in it. Um, hey, kitty. Um, to use the fairy analogy, it smells like 
freshly washed fairy skin. That's what it smells like. The fairy washed her skin in um, in a coconut based soap and washed off in a little cup of dew that had been gathered inside a leaf. Um, yeah, and then she shook herself off, and fluffed her wings, and she was ready for her day. So that's what this smells like. Freshly washed fairy skin. What does it taste like? I think it tastes like the first time a baby gets to eat peaches instead of peas. It's surprising. It's su surprisingly sweet and it has a lot of nuance to the flavor. And it's so different from those damn nasty peas that I've been eating. I'm just, I was so tired of the peas. I mean, I ate the peas because I was hungry. I tried to spit them out. My mom would shove them back in my mouth. No, this I won't spit out. My mom can shove as much of this in my mouth as she wants. Oh, excellent. Okay. It's so excellent that I'm going to lick this thing. Yum. Okay. Um... All right, art and craft, what's the difference? Well, I didn't Google this first, so I don't know what other people are going to say, what other people are saying, what the experts and authorities say. I'll tell you what I say. There's a, art and craft can overlap. But the main difference is that art means something. And it means something because it came up out of the soul of the artist as an expression of pain, love, loss, lust, desire, joy, um, nostalgia, memory, fear. It, it's an expression of something, something human. Um, art generally affects others as well. <coughs> it affects their, them emotionally. Sometimes the way the artist intended, sometimes in entirely different ways. Um, but emotional exchange is the key to art. Craft can also affect people emotionally, but that's not what it's designed to do. Craft is a expression of the skills and materials that a person is using to create an object. Sometimes that object is created out from a pattern where you have to go and find and acquire the things to make this object. Sometimes it comes out of a kit. Sometimes it, it, it's, it's more creative. It comes out more out of your own mind. But it isn't so much designed to, craft isn't really designed to be, to cause someone to feel something or to express a feeling. It's more to serve a purpose or to be social. Um, and you see that all the time with these, you know, groups of women who get together and do the coloring books or um, like me and my, my friends and I will do um, card exchanges or we'll do, um, we'll work on a collective craft um, project you know the several women will do that and we interact about it we have fun and we we share our different techniques and materials and all of that sort of stuff and at the end we're done with something something pretty might make you happy something that you're going to send to somebody else something that you shove in a drawer and forget whatever but it's it's not designed to make someone else feel something profound and it doesn't come from a profound place so to me that's the difference between art and craft now I'm going to show you some examples this is the first hat I made a couple three weeks ago this hat is art and let me tell you why the more I look at this hat and think about it and ask myself why did I make it in the first place 
the more I realize just how profound an expression of art this is. And let, let me show you. These layers of color here in the brim, brim? No. I guess that would be the cuff. I'm going to uncuff it though. These layers of colors represent all of the frustration, pain, angst, fear, um, stress that I've gone through in the past few years. It represents, you know, my dad dying, trying to pull all my mom's stuff together, having to deal with throwing away, you know, nine, I think it was nine 40-yard bins worth of trash, trying to pull all of this work together without spending a lot of money, pooling resources I had from people who were willing to help me, um, uh, dealing with my mom's cancer, every day was a new adventure with that, um, then taking care of her through her, through her treatments, um, not being able to be home, developing my own health problems uh, like the gout over the, the past couple years, and all of that made these little compressed bright layers of difficulty in my life. Then something happened. What happened was my trip um, across the United States with Abigail. That's what this gold is. I was in a, um, a, a state of suspended animation while I was on my trip. It all melted together in this beautiful experience of seeing the United States and meeting uh, you, you, my YouTube people. So here's this sort of white noise, wonderful time out of, out of reality experience that I had. This stuff up here, that's after I got home. This is the explosion of all of these things that I had compressed in my life. Going through this allowed me to let go and out it all comes. This is the gout. This is my mom's cancer. This is body pain. This is not being able to take care of my home because my foot won't allow me to, so I'm in disarray still. Um, this is anger. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff coming out the top. It rests on my trip, I mean, my trip allowed me to kind of let all these things explode, and they're still exploding. But that's, that's what this means. It's art. Okay. Oh, incidentally, when I made that hat, I wasn't thinking about anything. I didn't think about it. I was frustrated. I was angry. I was stressed. I was sad. I was depressed. And I was sitting in that chair and not able to get up because I couldn't. I mean, even with a walker, the pain was so bad. Just getting to the bathroom made me cry. So what did I do? I grabbed a crochet hook and some cheap yarn and I started to just go to town. Not even thinking, just grabbing colors, just doing it and this thing emerged when I was done. Um, and I joked about that in an earlier video, how it was about, you know, an expression of, you know, my inner landscape. Um, it wasn't until recently, until really looking at that, had I realized what the inner landscape was that I was expressing. Now. Every hat I've made since then has been craft. None of them have been art. Even like the crazy Amanda hat with the funky flowers and all that. That's just craft. That was just, I'm, I'm bored today, so I'm going to make something in certain colors. Make sure it fits a certain way. Um, you know, put some bobblies on it. Um, this, these, all of these hats that are in the peacock colors, I did them because I've got so many friends who love peacock. I thought it would be fun to do some things that you know, my friends might like to look at. Um, the hats that have the drawstrings that turn into purses, these hats. This was just as a result of conversations I'd had with other, um, some of my YouTube people who somebody, a couple people actually suggested it. So I went ahead and did it. But none of it is, is art. It's just crafting. There's, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, so I just completed a hat that's art. Um... And it's not unconscious channeling of pain, but rather it's an expression 
of a female archetype that I relate to, the mermaid. Um, all my life I've wanted to live within a stone's throw of the ocean. I've always wanted to. Um, I, I feel best when I'm near a body of water. It could be a tiny body of water, like the stream that's running in front of my house right now. Tiny little narrow little stream of water that's coming down out of the mountains and heading on down um, that I haven't seen in years because we've been in this drought. And just seeing that makes me happy. So I relate to, to mermaids. Um, I'm a double water sign um, in the astrological world. So it's kind of no... no big surprise that I that I love the whole mermaid idea. Um, I've thought a lot of, of other reasons why I like mermaids. One reason I like them is they're sexless. Now that kind of goes deep because for me sexlessness has always equaled um, safety. So that's I mean that's part of the getting and staying fat thing is um, far few, fewer men were um, attracted to me um, as a young fat girl. And it wasn't so much that I wasn't attractive, because now I know that there are plenty of fetishists or men who just don't care or men who actually kind of like it or it reminds them of their mothers or whatever. And um, so uh, the pool of men that I could have been out with was huge. But by staying fat, I felt sexless. I felt safe, so I didn't, I only put out the vibe when I felt like it, and, which wasn't very often, so, um, I had a safe place to, it, like a, the whole ostrich putting its head in the sand kind of thing, well, being fat was my sand, I mean, the, the world was still around me doing its thing, but I, I felt safe because I wasn't, you know, experiencing my, self as fully as I could have. So, um, mermaids are like that. Mermaids, they're beautiful with their hair and their lovely scales, but from the waist down there, fish, they, they have no, no sexual, um, expression outside of breasts, um, to worry about. It makes them awfully powerful. Um, and extremely mysterious. I mean, how do you make more mermaids? No one knows. Um, they are always young. They always are beautiful. They, they get to, ex you never hear of mermaids having predators. Um, they just exist in harmony with the ocean and all the things that are in the ocean. Uh, that is, Wow, that, that feels so powerful, and, and it looks so beautiful. So, I decided to express my feelings about mermaids with this hat. This, this is art. It's art because it's an expression of my inner landscape. Um, I'm going to insert a clip where I show you the, um, these little items here. There's a scallop shell, a chambered nautilus, and a starfish. They've been embroidered and beaded. You'll see the top of the hat where the mermaid, whose tail is the only thing you can see, she's just dove under the water. So there's all of the stuff is the water, the foam from the water. You can see a little foam where she's dove. Um, her tail is lightly beaded and has a little bit of scale effect.
So when you, well, let me finish explaining. This is the foam on the beach. This is the colors of the beach, the sand and the blues and the greens and the foam. We have coral here. Um, we have this kind of bright kelpy sort of color here. We have the color of the ocean up in here, more kelp and coral. So this hat, while it's crazy and um, silly and may or may not sell when I put it on Etsy, this is art because it comes from in here and, and in here. Um, and it comes out of me through the mechanism of craft, crochet, beading, embroidery, um, skill, craft skills, um, regardless of how well or not so well I've developed them, <laughs> um, have, have come together to make this piece of art. So, this is a, um, this is very much a item that exists on the line between art and craft. I'm going to turn this way a little bit, too, so you can, I don't know how well you can see that. So anyhow, I just wanted to share all that uh, with you guys this morning. This hat took days, days to make. I, I didn't add up the hours, but it just, it took forever. Um, it is going on Etsy. I'm pro probably going to put a $120 price tag on this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make any more I because I think I've probably expressed what I needed to express. Although I have been crocheting more mermaid tails. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with mermaid tails right now. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. They may, I may make a tote bag or, or a handbag of some sort. I might make a pillow. I might make another hat. I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm still needing to express the mermaid thing. But this hat is a done. So anyhow, I just really wanted to share that, share that with you. I'm going to continue to make hats as craft as well, things that I can sell for thirty dollars to my um, YouTube people or my Facebook peeps or whatever, and um, and put on um, Etsy for you know whatever their actual price is going to be, somewhere between forty nine and sixty nine. Um, but my art pieces, they'll have a showcase all their own on you know, on my, on my shopping site. So anyway, thank you for, you know, sticking with me through this long video. And my next video is going to be a, an unboxing. Um, I'm going to be sharing, um, items that came to me, um, in a hat exchange. I made a hat for one of my YouTube people and she sent me back an absolute embarrassment of riches. I mean, the stuff that she gave me in exchange for a silly little hat is uh, mind mind blowing. So I'm going to set that up and do that uh, do that video today. And I hope everybody's staying safe, staying warm, and being happy wherever you are. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.